We're really welcome to update number four. So as you can see it's all come together, everything's complete and finished as far as the build goes. Uh, it took me a little longer than I expected, basically due to the fact that it was a, a lot more detailed than I thought it was going to be. Um, but while on the surface it may look fairly simple, there's a lot of small parts that need to go together to build larger parts, for example all the the, uh, the smoke launches there. A lot of little, little parts in there, and things like hatches and the turret on the back there, the gun lock, all the tow cable hooks, yeah, things like the exhaust and this massive um, tow cable fixing, fitting on the back. Just a lot of small parts that needed to go together. But it's all done, it took me a week to put it all together. Um, I had a few nights off here and there just due to, due to other commitments, but, yeah. Um, by and large, I, it all went together fairly well. There's a, a few gaps here and there and a few slight fitting issues, but overall, I think it looks, uh, it's looking pretty good. The, um, I had to use a bit of super glue to fix these tow cables here. Um, so that's why there's a bit of frosting here and there. Um, so yeah, it's looking a bit scruffy at the moment, but once the primer goes down, it uh, should hopefully look a bit neater. Yeah, there was one small modification I made, was the, on the box art, you could see various um, cables and, uh, was it a cable going from the hull into the uh, head, uh, lamps here. So I just got a bit of a sprue, spare sprue that I'd used for an old kit aerial and just bent it into shape and then carefully placed it in there. And the same on the other side. So as you can see the kit did come with other cables that go to all the smoke launchers. So they're there and there's one um, on top of the turret here. And yeah, so that was really the only modification I made to the kit. Everything else is pretty standard. Well, I'm not going to include any crew with this. I've left some of the hatches open to be opened and closed, but these uh, these two hatches were glued shut because there's no there's no interior detail, so they just open up into holes in the kit anyway. The uh, the gun lock isn't actually glued. There's a nice little pin. It just uh, falls down there and then you can open it up and move the gun away. But for some reason the the ball socket for the gun just doesn't have any strength so it just falls down. So I'll be just be displaying it with the, the gun lock in place. I may end up gluing it, we'll see. See how secure it is. And yeah, so Uh, give it a bit of a clean down, just to get rid of any uh, remaining oil that's left on the kit, which you can still feel now and again. But yeah, so next step will be priming, using my trusty old Tamiya spray can primer. Uh, this is the stuff I prefer to use simply because it's, um, it's, it's pretty rock solid, it's, you can, it's sandable, and yeah, it dries really quickly. Um, yeah, I haven't had a single problem with this yet, and it works really well. So that's what I'm sticking with for now. And yeah, so coming up next, it'll be uh, should be all primed and ready to paint. Okay, so that's the priming done. I ended up doing three light coats all over the entire model, and that was enough to give it sufficient coverage. Um, I just used the the spray can primer there. Uh, just used, sprayed it out on the garage where I've got a little setup. Just saves me from spraying animals all throughout the house. And uh, yeah, so one of the advantages of using a lighter colour for priming like this is that it brings out a lot of defects and seam lines that may have been invisible previously. So for example, I spotted 
a bit of a seam line on top of the muffler there, you can just about see. But that'll be, that entire thing will be covered with pigments to create a really rough texture, uh, rust texture. So that should be enough to cover that seam line. And yeah, so apart from that there were no other imperfections or offending seams that I've spotted, so I'm quite happy to start painting. I've also pulled out this figure that I, uh, from the Cromwell kit that I've just completed, that I didn't use. I thought he might make a nice addition to the commander's hatch, just to give the model a sense of scale, because it's absolutely huge, this tank. And yeah, I guess it all depends on how well the figure painting comes out. Because at the moment, figures are my biggest weakness. So, yeah, we shall see if he makes the final cut or not. But yeah, so, next stop should be uh, the base coat. Right, to start off with, I'm going to give it a base coat slash undercoat of Vallejo Model Air 19, which is camouflaged dark green. Now, this is a quite a few shades darker than the main coat which is going to be Vallejo Model Air 22 camouflage green Alrighty, so that's the base coat done. I'm now going to be applying the top coat, uh, Vallejo's Model Air Camouflage Green. Right, so as you can see, the top coat has gone down, and I've also started painting some other smaller details. So I've done the spare tracks, the muffler, and all the tracks in a sort of basic rust colour, just using Tamiya's Red Brown XF64. And for the muffler, I applied the rust texture, as mentioned in an earlier video. So you can see a slightly textured look there. That was just a mix of the Tamiya red-brown paint with um, Vallejo's Desert's Dust pigments. So you're mixing those up and then applying it to the muffler and then dabbing it uh, with a flat brush just to bring out that texture. Yeah, so that, um, that covered up the seam line, which I was hoping it would. So that turned out all right. I've also done the machine guns and up here and the periscopes are very deep purple. Uh, there's a bit of tidy up work to do there. So yeah, next step will be the, the weathering. I'm now applying just some very light chipping around some of the edges of the tank just using some flat black paint. Um, wiped off on the tissue and just lightly applying to the edges. I want to try and keep the weathering sort of to a minimum. Um, I want it sort of used a little bit but not completely beat up.
I've now applied a green wash to the entire model, uh, all the green bits anyway, using Palejo's green model wash. That was just applied um, just with a wide flat brush, just uh, all over the, the green surface areas. And now I'm going to be applying a rust wash to the muffler just to give it a bit more variation. Yeah. This is with rust wash from Vallejo. Yeah. Using a slightly different brush for this, I think. I just want slightly different patchy areas. And now I'll use the same rust wash just to um, pull in areas where I think there's going to be pulled water on the tank. So, for example, in this storage box here, I just dab a bit of rust in there. It won't be too heavy, it'll be very slight, but it's just one of the extra details. And. I'm up on the major seam down the hole. Right, so I've done a green wash and a black wash, pin washes. I've also done some dry brushing, and now I'm going to apply a light dusting effect using Vallejo's Desert Tan. Uh, thins down at about a one to one ratio. Okay, so it's been a couple of nights since the last segment, but as you can see, it's all done. So, some of the steps that I've skipped on was adding the camouflage pattern to the gun there, uh, painting and adding the crew figure, adding the three antenna to the centre of the tank there, uh, a bit more dry brushing and a bit more uh, dust effects along the side skirts. And 
Yeah, a few more details like the fire extinguishers and the inside of the hatch there. So yeah, so that's the project complete. I'm uh, fairly happy with the outcome. It's definitely been one of my favourite tanks to build. Um, well, and regarding the figure, it's, it looks okay from this distance, but I'm still not 100% happy with my figure detailing at this point. Um, hopefully I'll get there eventually, but yeah, so he, um, he definitely adds a lot of character to the tank and gives it a bit of scale, so I'm glad I added him, gave it a good shot. Um, but yeah, it will take me a bit of practice to get to get my figures where I want them to be. But yeah, overall, I'm really sort of happy with it. Um, so, yeah, you can check out the previous three build videos I've got on my channel. I'll be putting up a separate uh, video, just, over, just a, sort of a brief overview of the final build, summarising the steps and bit of a closer look at some of the details so uh, you can check that out when it finally goes up and yeah so thanks for watching um, if you like this video then please subscribe to the channel um, this will be the first of many builds yet to come I've got quite a stack growing in the corner of the model room so this won't be the last and yeah so again thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time Take care.